Good morning. Thanks so much again for joining us for our new editions of Toolbox Tuesdays at the SCSA. Um, for today's discussion, we're going to talk about mental health, but specifically about stigma and discrimination, something that we're dealing with right in our backyard right now. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about that to get you guys started. I'll share my screen. And just a few things housekeeping wise before we get started, these are all recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel, on our Facebook page, as well as usually on Instagram. Um, so you can check back later and rewatch it if you like it and want to share it. Um, so stigma and discrimination. So with the COVID-19 pandemic, it has sparked a rise in prejudice and stigma against people across all racial and social boundaries. Um, to combat the discrimination, it's important to, to both stay informed while also treating uh, others with the respect and the dignity that they, that they deserve. So what exactly is stigma? Well, stigma is discrimination against an identifiable group of people, against a place, or against a specific nation. Stigma can be labeling, uh, it can be stereotyping, uh, discriminating, and other negative behaviors towards people. For example, stigma and discrimination can occur when people link a disease such as COVID-19 with a certain population, a specific community, or even a nationality. Uh, when individuals face discrimination like this and stigma over something that they can't control, mental health suffers greatly. So stigma around COVID-19 comes from a number of things. It's understandable that there's confusion, anxiety, and fear among the public. Um, unfortunately, these factors are also fueling the harmful stereotypes. Suddenly it becomes an us versus them scenario. Generally, stigma comes from a few specific places. Number one, it's a disease that's new and for which there are many unknowns. In Saskatchewan, we're currently on a bit of an upswing of cases, which can lead to even more fear and uncertainty among people. Number two is we are often afraid of the unknown. This is a very common thing among people, humans, cultures across the world. Um, if we don't understand what it is or how it works, um, generally we, we fear it. And number three is it's easy to associate that fear with others. Once that division is made, the inferences and projections begin to occur. So there's a certain groups of people that are facing more stigma and discrimination than others, specifically during COVID-19. Um, people are often afraid that these individuals will be the ones that are going to spread the disease in their communities. And every day we hear more and more stories of these individuals being ostracized or in some instances publicly outed, denied services, or turned away in some form. So some of the more common people that are facing this stigma and discrimination are certain racial and ethnic minority groups. Uh, people who have tested positive for COVID-19 as well as emergency responders and healthcare providers. Often people think because they're, they're on the front lines that they are more likely to come in contact with the disease. Other frontline workers such as grocery store clerks and delivery drivers, being as that their job requires them to deal with people face-to-face -face every day. As well as people who have disabilities, whether developmental or behavioral disorders that may find it difficult to follow public health recommendations. Some people who have underlying health conditions that can cause things like a cough, um, people who are asthmatic or um, maybe have had pneumonia or just have lung issues, um, people can discriminate against them thinking that they may be ill. And as well as people living in congregate or group settings, such as those experiencing homelessness. All of these people have faced some form of discrim discrimination or stigma right now with COVID-19. And so it's important that we recognize what the facts are. Number one is viruses don't discriminate and neither should we. Diseases can make anybody sick, regardless of their race or ethnicity. Fear and anxiety about COVID-19 can cause people to avoid or reject others, even though they are not at risk for spreading the virus. Generally, for most of us, the immediate risk of becoming seriously ill from COVID-19 is thought to be low. There are some people with an increased risk for more serious complications, and that's generally people with a weakened immune system, 
maybe people who are going through cancer treatment, um, and they need to be a little bit more careful about protecting themselves from COVID-19. But generally for most of us, the risk is low. And someone who has completed quarantine or isolation, they do not pose a risk to others. And that's exactly why we have that isolation and quarantine and, and we have it set for so many days. The most important thing you can do with COVID-19 to protect yourself and to stop the spread is to wash your hands. Every public health authority, the World Health Organization, the Center for Disease Control, that's their big thing is preventative measures, washing your hands. That's the best thing you can do to stop the spread. Stigma can make people feel guilty or bad about themselves if they have the virus, which obviously can negatively affect their mental health. Again, knowing the facts. Evidence is showing that stigma and discrimination due to the coronavirus actually has led to a reduction in people seeking medical care and testing. Uh, a reduction in people adhering to the actual interventions, including self-isolation. All of this can lead to cases not being reported, to more people being exposed, which makes responding to an outbreak even more difficult. People can become isolated to avoid discrimination. So again, not seeking healthcare, not telling people if they think they've been exposed, um, which can lead to more people being exposed. And people may be less likely to seek treatment for the virus if they fear they will face that discrimination. People who have COVID-19 or think they may have come into contact with someone who's infected might avoid quarantine to hide the fact that they are sick. And this discrimination also increases anxiety as the person now has to worry about how to manage the discrimination on top of everything else. And the big fact here is anyone can contract coronavirus. It doesn't discriminate on race, gender, age, or other personal qualities. Age comes in uh, to the discussion a lot because older people are, are generally more susceptible to those complications that we talked about um, and can thus get a, sicker from COVID-19. But generally stigma, it negatively affects your emotional, your mental, your physical health uh, of those stigmatized groups as well as the communities that they live in. They might experience isolation, depression, anxiety, or even public embarrassment. And this contributes negatively to everyone's mental status. Stopping the stigma is important to making all communities and their members safe and healthy. And everyone can help doing that by knowing the facts about COVID-19 and sharing that with their communities and family members. So what's the impact of stigma? Stigma can do a number of things. It undermines social cohesion. Prompt, it can prompt possible social isolation of groups which might contribute to a situation where the virus is more likely to spread, not less. And this can result in obviously more severe health problems and difficulty controlling the outbreak. So again, it can drive people to hide an illness to avoid discrimination if they feel like they will be. It can prevent people from seeking health care immediately if they need it. And it can discourage them from adopting healthy behaviors. In an outbreak, some people may be labeled, stereotyped, discriminated against, treated separately, or experience a loss of status because of that perceived link with a disease. Again, it's important to remember that facts, not fear, will stop the spread of coronavirus. Share the facts and accurate information about the disease. Watch where you get your information from. Challenge the myths and stereotypes that you hear from people. The only way to, to change the way people think is to start a discussion and and talk about the information and correct information that you know is, is not accurate. And one of the most important things and probably easiest things you can do to help this outbreak is to choose your words carefully. The way we communicate can affect the attitude of others. And there's things that people maybe overlook that they can do to reduce that stigma. So things you can do um, so talking about the new coronavirus, I know it's probably a topic that people don't want to talk about anymore, but being open about it is great. What you don't want to do is attach locations or ethnicity to a disease. It's not a, a Wuhan or a Chinese or an Asian virus. The official name for this disease was deliberately chosen to avoid stigmatization. 
The CO stands for corona, the V stands for virus, and the D stands for disease. 19 is because this disease emerged in 2019. Other ways you can help? Speak accurately about the risk of COVID-19 based on scientific data and the latest official health advice. Again, watch where you get your information, the Center for Disease Control, the World Health Organization, your local public health authorities, those are the best sources of information and they have the most updated information. Don't repeat or share unconfirmed rumors and avoid using hyperbolic language designed to generate fear like plague or apocalypse. You can also do talk about people acquiring or contracting COVID-19. But it's important not to talk about people transmitting or infecting others or spreading the virus as that implies intentional transmission and it assigns blame. These are really small things you can do, but your language is really important when you're talking about these things. When you use criminalizing or dehumanizing terminology, it creates an impression that those with the disease have somehow done something wrong or they're less human than the rest of us. Feeding stigma, undermining empathy and potentially fueling a wider reluctance to seek the treatment or attend screening, testing and quarantine. So there's some things you can do as well if you've been the subject of discrimination or you've faced stigma. One of the most important things is to find somebody you reach out to that you trust and talk about how you're feeling. Make sure you have that open communication and you don't isolate yourself. Remember that you didn't do anything wrong. Anyone who comes in contact with the virus can get sick. Doesn't mean you will. It doesn't mean that you're you know, going to suffer greatly. Um, nobody's more susceptible to this than anybody else. Reading social media discussions or blogs where people are posting stigmatizing language, we wanna avoid that. If you know people are sharing stuff that is not true or it's not helpful, try and get it out of your day-to-day -day life. As well, don't blame yourself if you did contract the virus. It can happen to anybody. And the important part is that you reported it, that you sought treatment and that you're open about it. So that is our toolbox talk today on mental health, stigma, and discrimination. Again, this is a recorded session, so you can access again on any one of our social media platforms or our website. And join us again on Thursday um, for our live webinar. Thanks again, and have a safe day.